Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tuan, a PhD student at KAIST, and today I would like to introduce LTE Sniffer, an open source LTE downlink uplink if stroper. Uh, this is uh, joint work with my team and Professor Yong Te, who gave us a keynote today. Uh, when we use LTE services, our smartphones or UEs and base stations communicate over the open air interface. And this means that uh, an eavesdropper can also listen to unencrypted information. And actually, the design of LT pro pro protocol stack leaves uh, unprotected information in different layers. For example, in upper layers, the broadcast messages and messages before authentic authentication are unprotected. In lower layers, the header information, the mark control element, and physical control information are not encrypted. And previous work show that uh, unprotected information leads to serious attacks, such as uh, user location tracking, user localization, collecting and mapping identities, video, smartphone, fingerprinting. Uh, collecting encrypted information is also useful. For example, remote attack can break encrypted phone calls. Uh, you can see to implement those attacks, what we need is an LTE sniffer, a tool that can decode uh, over the air LTE packets exchanged between your smartphones and base stations. However, current LTE sniffers have limited capabilities. First, open source LTE sniffers have limited capabilities. They only decode uh, downlink control information, and they cannot decode downlink data channel or uplink data channel. Second, commercial LT sniffers also have limited capabilities. For example, Airscope, the most popular LT sniffer, does not support uplink. Another sniffer, WaveJust, supports uplink, but it is expensive. Also, we cannot modify code to add new features for commercial sniffers. Overall, researchers like Kilf have limited tools to obtain over the air LTE packets. So for that reason, in this work, our goal is to develop and share LTE sniffer, an open source LTE sniffer that can decode uplink, downlink, control data channels. Then, how LTE sniffer can decode LTE traffic? So LTE sniffer utilizes the downlink control channel, which is not encrypted. This channel contains DCI or control, downlink control information, which indicates to UE how and where to decode downlink data or how and where to send uplink data. Because there are multiple DCIs for multiple users in downlink control channel, the base station assigns INTI, a radio identity for each UE. For example, user A decodes its downlink DCI and then decodes its downlink data in downlink data channel. User A also decodes its uplink DCI and then sends uplink data in uplink data channel. Similarly, user B decodes its downlink uplink DCI and then decodes its downlink data or sends uplink data. So, by decoding DCIs for users A and B, LT Sniffer can further decode downlink uplink data for users A and B. However, decoding LT traffic is non trivial because the Sniffer has to face several problems. The first problem is the sniffer does not know modulation scheme for uplink and downlink packets. This is because the parameter for determining modulation scheme is transmitted via an encrypted message. To solve this problem, LT sniffer tries all potential parameters to decode the first packet. It then stores the correct parameters to the database to decode the, the packets for the same user. The second problem is the base station assigns radio configuration differently for UEs based on channel quality. Therefore, the LT sniffer needs to figure out the radio configuration to decode uplink downlink packets. To solve this problem, LT sniffer continuously monitors radio setup procedure where it can obtain configuration. Whenever the base station sends the radio configuration to smartphones, LT sniffer also obtains the configuration and save to the database. Lastly, LT sniffer has to fight different signal progression delays in uplink because they are, the UEs are located in different distances. Therefore, to decode the uplink traffic, the signal delay must be known. To solve this problem, LT sniffer utilizes the uplink reference signal 
to calculate for the time delay by channel estimation. LT sniffer then use channel equalization to compensate for the delay, delay. And after we solve three problems related to decoding LTE traffic, we implement LTE sniffer. Our design and implementation adapt behaviors of both UE and base station in downlink and uplink. We also apply three approaches, A1 to A3, to our design. Uh, the LT sniffer is implemented on top of Falcon with the help of SIS run library. This design and implementation enable LT sniffer to support various functions. In particular, LT sniffer supports the decoding of uplink downlink control data channels. In downlink, it can decode PDCCH and PDSCH. In uplink, it can decode PUSCH. It supports up to 256 corp in both downlink and uplink. For further analysis, LT sniffer stores decoded packets into pickup files. LT sniffer also supports a security API with three functions proposed by previous work. Uh, I will tell you more detail about API later. And we also evaluate the performance of LT sniffer in testbed and commercial environments. Uh, for more detail, please check our paper. I will show you something more interesting. We also develop an API with three functions proposed by previous work. The first one is identity mapping, which can map between radio identity, INTI, and another temporary identity, TeamZ. INTI and TeamZ mapping is the starting point of location tracking, website video fingerprinting. The second function is permanent identity, IMZ collecting, which can lead to surveillance or privacy issues. The last function is UE capability profiling, which can lead to UE model fingerprinting. And I would like to show you a demo video. Oh, sorry, so this is my technical problems, I think. So in this demo video, we use two sniffers. And we made phone call to victim every 15 seconds. And you can see the same Team Z appears on LTE sniffer every 15 seconds. Thus, we know that it is Team Z of victim. You can see the same Team Z appear. And also, you can see Team Z's from other user appeared on LTE sniffer. <laughs> So now we know the team Z of victim, and we can use team Z to map with INTI of victim. And we then use INTI to sniff the victim's uplink traffic. And this is victim's uplink traffic. Uh, we also release our LT sniffer on GitHub. And notably, our GitHub uh, repository achieved more than 800 stars. And you can scan the QR code on the uh, left hand side, right hand side to access LTE sniffer. So in this talk, I have introduced LTE sniffer, an open source sniffer that can decode uplink, downlink, control data channels. LTE sniffer also supports a security API to facilitate security research on LTE network. For more detail, please check our paper and GitHub. And that's all I have today. Thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer your questions. But the idea is that if you're tracking based on CRNTIs and SIMs uh, or RNTIs, whichever RNTIs, uh, since they change, for example, with handovers or different procedures, does it mean that this tracking is only for as long as that RNTI, the current RNTI, is, is available? 
and therefore for a short period of time. So for example, if I moved from here to London, my uh, RNTI will change probably three times. So your tracking works for the current RNTI. So within a given area until I don't move very far or I not out of time passes. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it's correct. Like, um, and if you use uh, an LT sniffer, you can only listen to one cell, one base station at the yeah, same yeah. time. Okay. So yeah, what we so listen is listen to current INTI inside a base station. And you know, is this the reason yeah. why uh, your supervisor said earlier that this is to track people within one hour or something like this, or that was something else? Uh, you or know, the police was tracking them in one hour or something? Yeah, yeah. So this uh, LT sniffer can support you to track uh, the physical uh, position, location of the user. So basically, uh, this is the first, uh, just a starting point. And to do that, you need to uh, deal with technical challenges, more, more challenges. And so this is the starting point of the uh, physical location tracking. Okay, thank you. Yes. Hi, um, great project. I'm very excited to start playing with it. Um, could you tell me what um, what radio support looks like? So, um, you know, do you support a lot of different SDRs, or is it tailored for you know an X series ETS USRP? Yes. Um, so, LT sniffer has a uplink and downlink function. Yes. So, for downlink, it can use any SDR supported by the SI, SI run library because okay. we use as a run library. But uh, for uplink, it needs a USRP X. Uh, because um, we need to synchronize with uplink and downlink frequency at the same time. And using USRPX with the same clock source from the main board, we can access, uh, we can uh, uh, have the synchronization between uplink and downlink. Yeah, so that's why you need uh, USRPX for the uplink. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can I ask a question? So earlier, Yongde spoke about one of your open source projects you'd had before that was taken down or they didn't approve of what you were doing? Have you had any backlash with this being like open source and potentially other people could use it in a malicious way? Uh, pardon me? This question is, do you need to Yeah, so uh, actually um, in our GitHub repository, we say clearly that uh, you need to deal with uh, ethical problem when you using LT sniffer when you use LT sniffer, like you need to check uh, local regulation on sniffing LT traffic. So it is one thing we <laughs> need to mention on our GitHub repository when you, uh, people use LT sniffer. Have the commercial versions reached out to you about your product and like, have you tried it against the commercial products? Is it yours better or? So the commercial, what was it? It was Wave June or something that's already out there. The one that you've got now, is it better? Has it got more capabilities? So we have compared with uh, S-Scope, a commercial sniffer uh, only support dialing. And, but uh, unfortunately, we only have the old uh, version of, uh, of S-Scope. But uh, basically, the old version does not support uh, all of the functions uh, as we support in LT sniffer. So it has a lower success rate means it, has, uh, it can decode lower messages over the air LTE messages. And our sniffer can decode uh, more than the, the scope, uh, the version we use. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Let's thank the speaker again.